Welcome to the second slideshow about foraminifera. The first one outlined the way these unicellular, mostly shell-covered, granuloticulose protists are currently classified, and in so doing, emphasize their great diversity and their existence in many ecologic niches now and in the past. Here we attempt to show how these qualities are used to advantage by several wide-ranging disciplines of science. First and foremost, precise chronostratigraphic data. These are obtained both globally and provincially from stratigraphic successions of marine origin because large populations of foraminifera displaying a continual sequential evolution in an unending diversification recur throughout the Phanerozoic eon. This chart indicates the range of the groups of major orders and in a broad sense lists criteria for their recognition. In the Cambrian, diversification was slow and the sparse foraminiferal fauna was mainly tectonous. As shown on this chart, Many single-chambered forms, both proteinaceous and agglutinated, first appear in the Ordovician, with uh, others added in Silurian times. The first expansion of multi-chambered groups began in Middle Devonian time. Then, both agglutinates and the first microgranular wall genera blossom. The newcomers include the endothyroids pictured here from the German Carboniferous and their relatives, the Fusilinids, plentiful in shallow seas during the late Carboniferous and Permian. These charts, one of the Pennsylvanian of the United States, the other global, show that they evolved rapidly, so provide large numbers of closely spaced stratigraphic markers. At the end of Permian times, the great extinction of all living forms included the Foraminifera. About half of the then existing genera perished. Recovery was slow, but a large number of tectonous and calcareous agglutinates are found in straightedated Middle Triassic. Later in that period, they become more numerous and continue their expansion and evolution during the Jurassic. At the same time, the Porcelaneous Miliolids and the Hyaline Leginids that occur first in Carboniferous strata take a more prominent role, and the Hyaline orders Bulliminida and the even more highly varied and more nearly ubiquitous Brutaleida appear. Both orders evolve rapidly, with an apogee in the middle and upper Cretaceous when several groups of larger foraminifera, mainly in the Botaleida, appeared and provided a series of excellent markers. But all the large genera vanish in the massive extinction marking the end of the Mesozoic era. Their Cenozoic representatives are somewhat less varied, but equally useful. For first plankton, the Fabusalacea, a family of the Globigerinida with aragonite tests are reported in the Bedjosian Middle Jurassic of Eastern Europe. They become extinct in Medio Cretaceous times. Plankton with calcite tests appear just after the first occurrence of the aragonitic forms and provide nearly global biostratigraphic information for the remainder of the Mesozoic and throughout the Cenozoic era. In addition to their preeminence in the field of chronostratigraphy, Foraminifera serve several other disciplines. One of them is the study of marine environments. Certain families of benthonic genera are most numerous in discrete, well-defined habitats where, as this slide demonstrates, their presence is an important element in the recognition of a specific set of ecologic factors that constitute a named depositional setting. These findings have been extrapolated to the recognition of paleo environment, but the use of microfossils to infer ancient habitats 
must be based on deduction from the niches occupied by existing forms. These charts locate existing genera in relation to water depth and habitat. It is these data that are taken to be applicable to fossil assemblages. This chart is an attempt to do so. It includes the major groups of Foraminifera, together with other microfossils, all classified into broad categories of water depth. As pictured here, temperature too has a decisive role in the distribution of both benthonic and planktonic genera and species, and its current patterns have been used to aid in the interpretation of ancient climates. But a more precise method of determining ancient water temperature is obtained by measuring the ratio between the oxygen-18 and oxygen-16 isotopes of fossil calcite shells. These values have been obtained for all the periods of the Phanerozoic Aeon. Here is a graph of the rise and fall of water temperatures during those 543 million years. The all but ubiquitous shells of foraminifers in marine sediments are a basic element in the determination of isotope ratios that indicate the climatic zone occupied by a drifting continent, its paleolatitude, at any given geological period. And the distribution of planktonic species has been used to infer the existence and direction of ocean currents. Many of the larger species of living benthonic genera house chlorophyll using symbionts, so it is inferred that larger fossil species in Mesozoic and Cenozoic strata also harbored them. Today, the Foraminiferin chooses its helpful guests among species of red or green algae, of diatoms, or of dinoflagellates. These tiny partners aid their hosts by providing them additional food, mainly starch, and in turn are protected from harm. Some large planktonic foraminifers, too, have symbionts. During the day, these are exposed to light in a layer of rhizopodal ectoplasm covering the test. At night, the ectoplasm and its cargo is drawn into the test. These scanning electron images of some 15 genera include out of the ordinary genera that represent the five orders that differ in test composition or construction from those of what might be termed the more successful orders. In the Carterinida, a trochospile rotolid test consists of secreted calcite spicules in calcite cement, a unique combination of structural elements. In the Spirulinida, the test is a tube coiled either planispirally or as a low trochoid, but formed by only one or at most several crystals of low magnesium calcite, also a unique construction. The aragonite test of the Involutinida consists of two chambers. The second, a tube coiled around the first with the umbilical area of one or both sides generally filled by pillars. Silicoloculinida have a siliceous test and its representatives are found only at abyssal depths. The Robertinida are aragonite and the several families have internal chamber partitions in several discrete forms of test resembling those of the Bulliminida and low-spired Rotaliida. Species of many orders of benthonic foraminifers live in commensal relationships with a variety of invertebrate animals and some algae. These involuntary hosts have a hard surface or a firm integument that provides a solid base for temporary or permanent attachment that ensures protection from turbulence and premature burial. Filler feeders are favored for the currents they generate ensure a constant flow of nutrients. 
Recent studies of the genetics of Foraminifera have shown that Ludwig and Tappan attempt to indicate the evolutionary relationships of the orders based on morphology and degree of complexity in relationship to time is not in full accordance with the genetic information now being obtained. But these findings have not yet progressed far enough to justify a full-scale revision.